Hello and welcome. In today's video I'm going to explain to you what GraphQL subscriptions are and why you might need them. I will also show you an example of how to set up an Apollo server to support subscriptions. So without any further ado, let's get started. Firstly, let's answer the question, what are the GraphQL subscriptions? GraphQL subscriptions are a way to push data from the server to the client in real time. They allow the server to send the data to the client as soon as it is available, rather than the client having to request it. This is useful for scenarios when you want to keep the client with the sync with the server in a real time, such as for chat applications or collaborative editing tools. Before the lesson, I set up a basic project for us to use. Let's take a look at it now. The project only has one index.js file, which has all the necessary code. To understand how the subscriptions work, we will be using the Express.js and the Apollo server packages. In the code, firstly I specified the port for our application, which is 3000. Then I created a variable for schema definition. Currently, the schema has only one query and one mutation. The query isn't really relevant for our purposes, but it's required by the Apollo server. The mutation, on the other hand, is more important. We will use it to initiate a long-running action and then use the subscription to send a message when the operation is completed. Next, there is a resolvers variable which contains the logic for the mutation and queries, as you would expect in the GraphQL implementation. Under the resolvers, I created a schema using main executable schema method. I also initialized the Express instance and the HTTP server. Then I initialized the Apollo server instance and I passed in the previously created schema. I also set the plugin for draining the HTTP server. After that, I started the Apollo server. The next line is the most important one, because it allows us to attach the GraphQL server to the Express server. Important note, when using subscriptions, we cannot use the start standalone server method of Apollo server. Instead, we have to use the Express middleware. Finally, at the bottom of the page, I used the listen method of the HTTP server to start listening for incoming connections. It's important to listen on HTTP server, not Express app. In the near future, we'll add a WebSocket server and this way we will be listening to both HTTP requests and WebSocket requests. Now, when we know what the app does, let's start implementing the subscriptions. For GraphQL subscriptions, there are a variety of messaging options to choose from, such as Redis, RabbitMQ, Kafka and more. The simplest implementation uses WebSockets. However, keep in mind that WebSocket connections are kept in memory, so if your app scales to the multiple instances, you might need a different solution. Ok, our first task is to install some additional packages. To do this, enter the following command. npm install ws space graphql dash ws. We will use the ws package to initialize the WebSocket server and the graphql ws package to properly initialize and shut down the WebSocket server. Now let's import the WebSocket server class and the use server method from installed packages. Ok, now we can initialize the WebSocket server instance. To make it work correctly with the GraphQL, we need to pass two parameters to the constructor. Firstly, the HTTP server and the path. The path must be the same as the one we set in the Express middleware. Then we can use the useServer function from the WS GraphQL package, passing in it the schema and the WebSocket server instance. This tells the GraphQL server that we will be using the subscriptions in the app. Ok, maybe let's move those two declarations before the Apollo server initialization. Next, we need to create a custom plugin to properly shut down the WebSocket server to avoid any memory leaks. Each plugin has a lifecycle method called server will start, in which we will return the drain server method. In this method, we will place the logic for closing the WebSocket server. All what we have to do is to call the dispose method of the WebSocket server cleanup object and await for the result. That's it for the app setup. Now we can actually create a subscription. Let's go to the type devs definition and add another type called subscription. Subscriptions are similar to queries. We need to define the operation name and the return type at the minimum. Let's create a subscription to inform the user when an operation has finished. I will return the operation type, which we will define here in the schema. The operation will contain a name and an ending date, both of which will be required strings. 
The next step is to add resolver function for the subscription method. Let's go to the resolvers variable and declare the subscription object. Inside it, let's define the operation finished method. Super important fact, the subscription resolvers differ from mutation and query resolvers. They are objects containing the subscribe method. The subscribe method has to return the async iterator to iterate over async results. To fulfill those requirements, we're going to install one more package. Please type npm install GraphQL subscriptions. From GraphQL subscriptions package, let's import the pubsub class. We will be using the pubsub to emit messages and to iterate over them. So, Let's firstly create a pubsub instance outside of the scope of the any function. It can be above the resolvers. Now let's go back to the resolver function and the operation has finished method. There we can use the async iterator method of the pubsub object. The method requires us to pass in an array containing the names of an event that the iterator should listen for. In other words, anytime we emit a message with one of those names, the iterator will receive it and the Apollo server will push the message payload to the client. Don't worry, it will become clearer when we emit a message. Okay, now let's take a closer look at the schedule operation mutation resolver. In the first line, we're just console logging the mocking operation name. Let's remove this line and actually mock a long lasting operation. To do that, let's create a new function which takes a name as an input parameter. Inside it, I will set one second timeout. Inside the timeout function, I will use the pubsub object to publish a new event. In the publish method, I need to set the event name first. It must match the name in the resolver async iterator we want to use. In our case, it's operation finished. Then, as a second parameter, the publish method takes a payload object. The payload must match the shape of the subscription we have defined. In our case, it needs to contain the operation finished name with a name and end date inside it. To summarize, in the mutation we are calling the mock long lasting operation function. It will wait one second and emit the operation finished event. Then the event will be captured by the async iterator and the payload will be sent to the client by the Apollo server. That's the theory. Now let's see it in the practice. For that, let's start the server by typing npm start. One note here. I didn't add the node daemon, so there is no hot reloading. If you wish to play with the app, you can do it by your own. Ok, in the logs I can see that the app has started. Let's open the URL in the web browser. The first thing to do is listen to the subscription. Thanks to the Apollo Studio, it's very easy. In the main window, let's type subscription and give it some name. Let's say watch operations. Then inside it, let's specify which subscription we want to listen for which is operation finished. Finally, we need to select the fields we are interested in and let's click the play button. As you can see, in the right section, we are now listening for the new messages. To trigger a message, we need to use the schedule operation mutation. I will set a test name and then I will click the play button again. After clicking, I immediately receive a response from the mutation, but what's even cooler, is that I receive a message from a subscription after one second. We can send the mutation a few more times. Each time we will receive a message in the subscription one second after sending the mutation. Cool, everything is working as expected. So that's it for today. We have learned a lot about GraphQL subscriptions and how to use them. Now you know how to set up a WebSocket server to send messages to listeners. Great job! Thank you for the watching and see you next time!